Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Eruta. I am Arshdeep Kaur and I am back again with important MCQs on a new act that is the Depositories Act 1996. We will be starting with the Depositories Act 1996. I am stressing this again and again that securities laws have been given 40% weightage. They are very important. Please start preparing for them from now only. They are going to make a huge impact on your score. Before I dive into the lecture, I would like to tell you that EduTap is coming up with test series for both the phases, phases 1 and phase 2 of this examination. It will include the chapter wise tests, selection tests and full length tests. So it's a great opportunity for you. Please avail it. Also EduTap is coming up with live classes, live crash course on this examination, the SEVI grade A legal exam for both the phases, phase 1 and phase 2. It will include live classes, 60 plus live sessions will be included in this. The test series that I've told you about, it will be including that also and it will include one-on-one -on -one mentorship. So to avail the offer, kindly check the link in the description below. Let's begin with the lecture. Question number 1. Consider the following statements related to the Depositories Act. The Act came into existence in 1996. It has 31 sections. An Act to provide for regulation to stock exchange and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto. Choose the correct options using the code given below. We have to choose the correct options from this. So the first and the second are correct. The Act came into existence in 1996. This is correct. It has 61. Sorry. It has 31 sections. This is also correct. But this is not correct. Let's read the correct option. The correct option is an act to provide for regulation of depositories. Not stock exchange but depositories in securities and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto. Right? If you read the preamble of this act, you will find out that this is an act to provide for the regulation of the depositories. So the answer is option C. Option C was only 1 and 2 are correct. And now we have also seen that what is the correct answer with regard to the third option. Right? Let's move on to the second question. Once a security is converted into a digital form, it is registered with a depository. Depository becomes a registered owner of it and by what name the actual owner is called. Before going into this question, I would like to tell you that what a depository is. A depository is an organization which holds securities such as debentures, bonds, government securities in electronic form. Uh, so a depository is an organization that holds securities such as bonds, government securities, debentures in an electronic form on the request of the investor through registered depository participants. Right? Now the question arises, what is a depository participant? A depository participant is an agent of a depository, right? So now that we know this, let's go back to the question. Once a security is converted into a digital form, it is registered with a depository, right? Understood. Depository becomes a registered owner of it. And by what name the actual owner is then called? It is answers. It is beneficial owner, right? Beneficial owner. Uh, if we read section 2, 1 of this act clause a beneficial owner means a person whose name is recorded as such with a depository right so he is a person whose name is recorded as such with a depository depository has also been defined in the act uh, in clause e Depository means a company formed and registered under the Companies Act 1956 and which has been granted a certificate of registration under subsection 1A. He has been granted the certificate of registration uh, of section 12 of Securities and Exchange Board of India 1992. Right. So the answer is C that is beneficial owner also known as BO. Right. Question number three. Which of the following is our true statements related to the participants of stock market? Functions of clearing houses can be transferred to clearing corporation. Investors can trade in the secondary market through brokers using DMAT account. Stock exchange facilitates trading of stocks among the shareholders and between the company and the shareholders. NSCCL is clearing house of NSE. All the above. The answer is all the above. These are all true. These are all the factually true statements. We can go through them once again. These are all true, right? First is functions. 
functions of clearing houses can be transferred to clearing corporations right investors can trade in secondary market through broker using the demat account so the investors can trade in the secondary market through what through the demat account stock exchange facilitates trading of stock among the shareholders and between the companies and the shareholders stock exchange facilitates the trading between the shareholders and between the company and the shareholders nscl is a clearing house of nse right question number 4 which of the below statements related to dematerialization process is valid before we go into it what is dematerialization so dematerialization is a process by which the physical certificate of an investor is converted into an electronic form right now the question was which of the below statements related to the dematerialization process is valid issuer on receipt of the certificate of security has to cancel the certificate of security and substitute in its record the name of the depository as a registered owner in respect of the security and inform the depository accordingly this is right physical certificate holder should first surrender the certificate of security to the issuer for which he seeks to avail the services of the depository right a depository shall enter the name of the person in its record as a beneficial owner as i've told you so these all are correct the answer is e all of the above all are true question number 5 arrange the following in chronological order as transfer of security happens with depository when someone buys a share first sell this is the correct order so please pay attention like that only first what happens at first seller informs the depository participants upon transferring his share shares to buyer which shall inform the depository so the seller will inform the depository participant and then they will uh, inform the depository right then is every depository shall on receipt of the intimation from a depository participant shall register the transfer of the security in the name of the transferee then they will register such transfer depository changes the beneficial owner of the security which was sold by the seller now at last the depository will change the beneficial owner of the security right so this is the right order 1 2 and 3 option d is correct question number 6 question number 6 what does it mean by surrender of certificate of security by the owner the answer is option b so what is surrendering of certificate means surrendering those shares in order to obtain the shares in the electronic format in the demat account right so what is surrender of certificate of security it is surrendering those shares in order to obtain the shares in ele electronic format in the demat account clear surrendering of certificate of security means surrendering those shares to the issuer in order to obtain the shares in electronic format in the account opened with the depository question number 7 when seller sells some security to buyer what information ultimately changes in depository record concerned with the sold security so when a seller sells some security to the buyer what information changes answer is option b name of the beneficial owner of the security right the name of the beneficial owner changes ultimately depository changes the name of the beneficial owner of the sold security let's move on to the next question question number 8 what is the full form of cdsl okay so what is the full form of cdsl before that what is cdsl cdsl is a depository of bse right and what is nsdl nsdl is a depository of nse you have to remember both these full forms so cdsl stands for the central securities depositories limited and nsdl stands for the national securities depository limited right cdsl is the depository of bse and nsdl is the depository of nse question number 9 during an ipo a company issues its securities to the investors right so in which format are those securities issued the answer is d demat records an investor can have securities in demat form right now is question number 10 what is the advantage of opening an account with depository and keeping shares in electronic format elimination of all risks associated with physical certificates elimination of bad deliveries 
fast disbursement of non cash corporate benefits like rights bonus etc and no no stamp duty on transfer of securities the answer is all of the above all of these are valid benefits of holding the dmat account right so it has all these benefits question number 11 Which of the following is correct about hypothecation in context of securities? The answer is option A. So we will now understand that what is hypothecation. Hypothecation is the practice where a debtor pledges his securities, right? It is a practice where the debtor pledges his securities as collateral to secure a bank loan. This is correct. Uh, answer is option A. Hypothecation is the practice where a debtor pledges collateral to secure a debt or a condition precedent to the debt. to secure a debt or it can be a, a condition precedent right so to secure a debt or a condition precedent to the debt or third party pledges or a third party pledges collateral for the debtor on behalf of the debtor the third party pledges it right so you so now we know what is hypothecation hypothecation is the practice where debtor pledges collateral to secure a debt or as a condition precedent to the debt or a third party pledges collateral for the debtor Let's move on to question number twelve. What are the sections of Depository Act 1996 which deals in penalty which can be levied in case of any breach? Answer is section 19A to 19G. So section 19A to 19G deals with the penalties which can be levied in case of breach, right? So these sections give different circumstances, different scenarios according to which the penalty is decided, right? Question number thirteen. Under which section of the Depository Act, nineteen ninety six, SEBI board has power to call for information from or make an inquiry against depository participants or beneficial owner? So, which of these section is it? It is answer D, section eighteen. Section eighteen. Let's read the section. The board, on being satisfied that it is necessary in the public interest or in the interest of the investor, so to do, may by order in writing. It will be a written order. call upon any issuer depository participant or beneficial owner to furnish in writing such information relating to the securities held in a depository as it may require so they can seek any such information that is in the depository in writing right authorize any person to make an inquiry or inspection in relation to the affairs of the issuer financial owner beneficial owner depository or participant who shall submit a report of such inquiry or inspection to it within such period as may be specified in the order or they can authorize any person for the inquiry or the inspection right clause 2 every director manager partner secretary officer or employee of the depository or issuer or participant or beneficial owner all these people shall shall on demand produce they have to produce it shall on demand produce before the person making the inquiry or inspection all information on such records and other documents in his custody having a bearing on the subject matter of such on inquiry or inspection so anything that is related to the subject of the inquiry or the inspection they have to furnish it on demand right question number 14 in what fund all sums realized by way of penalties will be credited right so so all these sums that are realized by the way of penalty in this act where will these sums go let's find out the answer is consolidated fund of india option d according to section 19j according to section 19j all sums realized by way of penalties under this act shall be credited to the consolidated fund of india question number 15 If any depository or participant or any issuer fails to redress investors' grievances within the time specified by the board, what penalty they will be liable to pay? None of these is the correct penalty. Let's just read what the penalty actually is according to Section 19C. So, if a depository or a participant or any issuer or its agent or any person who is registered as a intermediary under the provisions of section 12 of the securities and exchange board of india 1992 after having been called upon by the board in writing to redress the grievances of the investors fails to redress such grievances within a specified time so if they fail to redress such grievances within a specified time that was given by the board what will happen to them such depository or the participant or the issuer or the agent or the intermediary whoever it may be 
shall be liable to a penalty which shall not be less than 1 lakh rupees. The minimum is 1 lakh rupees. But which may extend to 1 lakh rupees for each day during which such failure continues subject to a maximum of 1 crore rupees. So the minimum is 1 lakh rupees. The maximum is 1 crore rupees. So the minimum is 1 lakh rupee. It can extend to 1 lakh rupee per day that he continues to make that default. And then it can go up to how much? 1 crore. It cannot be more than 1 crore. Right? So let's read the penalty again. Liable to a penalty which shall not be less than 1 lakh rupees but which may extend to 1 lakh rupees for each day during which such failure continues subject to a maximum of 1 crore rupees. Understood? Now, this is a bonus question. This is your homework. I will read the question. Under what section of the Depositories Act 1996, central government has the power to make the rules pertaining to the provisions of the Depository Act 1996? Section 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. This is your homework. You have to comment down the answer below. Right? So, that's all for today. I hope this was a helpful session for you. Thank you.